Hello. I bought this uh, insectocuter, this uh, insect killer, kind of for the shed because there have been a couple of wasps in there. Not entirely sure that wasps would fit through these gaps, but I mean, this is intended for mosquitoes primarily. And I'm not entirely sure that this is going to be very suitable. Um, I suppose the idea was that this thing would be on all the time, but I'm not sure. Do you need it to be on at night? I mean, do insects, I suppose mosquitoes um, do appear at night, but do wasps? Or do they go and sleep somewhere? Not entirely sure. But um, let's have a look at the uh, unit and see what the issues are. So it is a mosquito lamp, uh, rated voltage 110 to 20 volts, which is complete nonsense because it's got a lithium cell inside here and a little hole there, which takes a cable, which is USB. Uh, it does say uh, power supply DC 5 volts, 1 amp and rated power 5 watts. Now 5 watts is quite a lot. It's uh, 5 volts, 1 amp, isn't it? Um, so it only has a run time because it's got about a two uh, amp hour battery, a run time of about two hours, which I suppose is fine if you're having a barbecue or something, but not to run all night. So let's switch it on. Uh, you've got that mode, which has these, well, I'm not sure about whether they're ultraviolet, but they're certainly purple LEDs. Uh, you've then got this mode which switches to white LED, so it's just a kind of lantern and you've got off. Now let's look at when the high voltage system is switched on. So I've got this uh, non-contact voltage detector and if I turn that on, um, when I switch on the UV you can see that it's detecting that there is high voltage there when I switch on just the white lights that goes away so the high voltage it's about three kilovolts I think um, electrocution wires are only on when you've got the ultraviolet light on let's have a look at the sparks you can get off here um, I've got this ring terminal which I can insert into here and we can see uh, the sparks there and also if you sort of hold it in place you can get a sustained arc like so. So yeah certainly enough energy to uh, knock out a wasp or a fly or something like that. Right let's look at charging this thing so it comes with this cable which is a little oh what would that be uh, 1.3 millimeter pin is it? What's the diameter of that? Okay that appears to be 3.5 millimeters outside diameter. Okay that plugs into that hole and then let's shove this in a power bank. I'll put it in this XTAR power bank because it's got some nice information on here. Now you can see there's a blue LED somewhere and some sort of blue light bouncing around inside here. I don't quite know how that works but we'll take it apart and have a look. And this is pulling uh, 5 volts 0.1 amps and then after a period of time which I'll uh, stop the camera for. Uh, and if you're wondering what this power bank is um, this is the XTAR PB2SL and it's being powered currently by a couple of um, 21700 lithium ion cells and it's still pulling 100 milliamps. I'm waiting for that to go to zero. Oh, I think it's just happened actually. That blue light has gone off. Yeah, that goes to zero and then uh, after a short period of time this power bank will switch off. And there it is, it's switched off. Okay, so the cell inside here, which is an 18650 lithium cell, it's actually uh, mounted up inside the uh, tube here where the high voltage wires are wound. Uh, okay, let's take this thing apart and see what's inside. Now there's gonna be a lithium cell charger chip in there, I'd imagine, which is probably what's driving that blue LED, but let's take a look. 
Uh, two screws in the base of this. So let's take them out and see what happens. Okay, and there's the circuitry. Um, there's a switch here. So if I press the switch, the UV lights come on, then the white lights, and then no lights. Uh, you can see that the wires, the two wires which are alternately wound around the central column here, are just twisted around the legs of this thumping grate capacitor. Take a look at the value of that. Yeah, so this is a 223 uh, capacitor. What's that? It's that 220N, I think, isn't it? So 0.22 microfarads. Uh, 2KV, 2000 volts. Um, that's the brand, I take it. LI. Don't quite know what that is. Now, there's an 8-pin uh, chip here and a little blue LED there. And if I plug the charging cable in, you can see that the blue LED comes on. So I'm guessing this is the lithium cell charging chip, uh, something like a TP4056, that sort of thing. Um, but there's no markings on this chip, but uh, the proximity of this LED, and that's just gone off now. So the, uh, the cell inside this column is now fully charged. So I can undo that. Uh, this is clearly the cable to the lithium cell. I don't want to touch this board in case um, the capacitor is still charged. There is a resistor here, but it's quite a high value. So I don't quite know how long that would take to. It's a 226. Um, what would that be? 220K. Or is it more than that? Yeah, is that 2.2 meg ohms? Or is it 22 meg ohms? I can't think. Yes, yeah, 22 meg, isn't it? Because it's 22 followed by six zeros. Now, interestingly, uh, these wires that are wrapped around the legs of the capacitor are not soldered and they're actually very loose. And if I move this around, uh, you can see that they're actually moving. So I could probably ease this board out by just lifting these high voltage um, wires that are just, they're not connected at the top, of course, they're just simply uh, wound alternately around here and then disconnected at the top, obviously, because you don't want to short out the capacitor. Um, yeah, just see if these have got any, no, there's no charge on those. So uh, I'm just wondering if I can lift this off. Is there an easy way of doing this? Just so I can get the PCB Oh, that one's come off. Let's see if I can do the same with this. Is there an easy way of getting that to come away? Yeah, like so. So the PCB now comes out and there's the lithium cell down the middle. Uh, this top piece with the handle, I think I can coax that off. It's just got a, oh, that's fallen off. It's just got a few uh, clips sitting in little receptacles. Oh, let me do that off camera. And now there's a screw in the top, which I'm guessing will allow the cage to come away from the, um, yes, the central cylinder. But I still can't get that battery out. I think it's been, oh yeah, it's just been pushed into uh, some uh, a sort of funnel thing so that it uh, it grips this okay let's have a look at the cell oh it's less good than I thought it was going to be um, this is an 18650 it's only 1200 milliamp hours uh, 3.7 volts so in fact the runtime of this is going to be probably not much more than about an hour which is quite disappointing really and on the bottom of this PCB, uh, we've got four yellow LED, well, white LEDs with their yellow phosphor, and also the four ultraviolet LEDs, which are supposed to attract insects. And just quickly in macro mode to see, oh, there's only one resistor on the bottom, isn't there? That one there. 
are these all in parallel then yeah i guess they are because we haven't got enough voltage to put them in series and switching to the top there's the capacitor there's the high voltage transformer um, this i presume is the lithium cell charging chip there isn't a lot on here in terms of an oscillator there are a couple of transistors possibly FETs on here um, this little one here that looks like a regulator but actually it could be a a slightly higher power transistor d882 yeah it sounds like a transistor uh, for driving the transformer there. there's another device down there but there isn't a great deal more on here um what's this under the capacitor oh i think it's just a couple of uh, little uh, multi-layer ceramic capacitors there and i think a couple of diodes now i don't know whether um, once the signal has gone through the transformer you'll have ac of course at the output there i don't know whether they rectify that with these diodes to try and create a DC voltage here or whether they just leave it as an AC voltage. Not entirely sure. So let's just try running this on the bench. Now I'm aware that, of course, I've got slightly less resistance here, but it shouldn't kill the capacitor, should it, to just short it out. Um, okay, so there are the ultraviolet LEDs. Oh, yeah. And there's the sparks. And we should be able to get a sustained arc going there yeah enough to kill insects now how long after you go from uv where you can get sparks to the white leds oh yeah it's instant really so that 22 mega ohm resistor if indeed that's what it is i think it is discharges the capacitor enough and quickly enough there really isn't any time where you get high voltage after you switch off the UV mode. Interesting. So now I've just got to wind these wires uh, back around the legs of the capacitor. Um, they weren't wound tightly because I suppose you don't actually need a, a, a resistive connection here. A capacitive connection would do. Uh, a resistive connection would probably be better oh that's shorted the wires out now can i bring that down this wires ever so long why is it so long i could cut that shorter couldn't i okay that's the tower back on its base so let's turn on the uv lights and just check the ht yeah that's working fine sustained arc yeah that all looks good switch that off and just clip that back on the top so that it can hang. Yeah, that's it. That's the um, little mosquito killer, five volt with a lithium ion cell with about a one hour runtime. Now I suppose it could run continuously um, if you just plugged in the USB and had five volts continuously on here. Shouldn't overcharge the cell, should it? So yeah, you probably could run it all night on an external power supply. Um, but that's it for this video, so cheerio.